In this lecture, we are going to talk about IDS evasion techniques. How hackers can evade the intrusion detection system and gain access to the system. The first method is insertion attack. Insertion is the process in which the attacker confuses the intrusion detection system by forcing it to read invalid packets. An IDS blindly believes and accepts a packet that an end system rejects and an attacker exploits this condition and inserts data into the IDS. This attack occurs when the network intrusion detection system is less strict in processing packets than the internal network. The attacker obscures extra traffic and IDS concludes the traffic is harmless. Hence, IDS gets more packets than the destination. In the figure, you can see that the attacker's data stream is txtcaak. But when it goes to the network monitor, the network monitor sees it as atxtack, right? And at the end system, after dropping the x packets, the result at the end system is attack. In this way, insertion attacks are carried out. The next attack is a DOS attack, that is denial of service or intrusion detection system. Many IDS use a centralized server for logging alerts. If an attacker know the IP address of the centralized server, they can perform the DOS or other hacks to slow down or crash the server. As a result, attacker's intrusion attempts will not be logged. Using this evasion technique, an attacker can cause the device to lock up. It can also cause personnel to be unable to investigate all the alarms and delete the logs. It causes more alarms that can be handled by management systems. It will fill up the disk space causing attacks to not be logged. And it consumes the device processing power and allows attacks to sneak by. There are other attacks as well. I will just give a brief introduction to such attacks. The next attack is obfuscating. Obfuscating is an IDS evasion technique used by attackers to encode the attack payload in such a way that the destination host can only decode the packet, but IDS cannot decode the packet. Attackers manipulate the path referenced in the signature to fool the host intrusion detection system. Attackers can encode attack patterns in Unicode to bypass the IDS filters but be understood by an IIS web server. Attacks on encrypted protocols such as HTTPS are often obfuscated if the attack is encrypted. Next is false positive generation. Attackers with the knowledge of the target IDS craft malicious packets just to generate alerts. These packets are sent to the IDS to generate large number of false positive alerts. Attackers then use these false positive alerts to hide the real attack traffic. The next is session splicing. Session splicing is a technique used to bypass the IDS where an attacker splits the attack traffic into many packets such that no single packet triggers the IDS. Basically, it is a kind of fragmentation attack. Now this attack is effective against IDS that do not reconstruct the packets before checking them against intrusion signatures. If attackers are aware of delay in packet reassembly, they can add delays between the packet transmissions to bypass the reassembly. Now many IDS stops reassembly and if they do not receive packets within a certain time, they will stop working if the target host keeps session active for a time longer than the IDS. Any attack attempt after a successful splicing attack will not be logged by the IDS. The next is Unicode evasion. Unicode is a character coding system 
to support the worldwide interchange, processing and display of written texts. In the Unicode space, all the code points are treated differently, but it is possible that there could be multiple representations of a single character. Now because of this complexity, some IDS systems handle Unicode improperly as Unicode allows multiple interpretations of the same characters. Taking this as an advantage, attackers can convert attack strings to Unicode characters to avoid pattern and signature matching at the IDS. Fragmentation attack Fragmentation can be used as an attack vector when fragmentation timeouts vary between IDS and host. If fragment reassembly timeout is 10 seconds at the IDS and 20 seconds at the target system, attackers will send the second fragment exactly after 15 seconds after sending the first fragment. Now in this scenario, the IDS will drop the fragment as the second fragment is received after its reassembly but the target system will reassemble the fragments. Attacker will keep sending the fragments with 15 second delays until the attack payload is reassembled at the target system. And the last one is time to live attacks that is TTL attack. Now these attacks require the attacker to have a prior knowledge of the topology of the victim's network. This information can be obtained using tools such as Traceroute, then ZenMap which gives information on the number of routers between the attacker and the victim. We have seen the fish eye topology in the scanning part of this course. Attacker breaks malicious traffic into three fragments. Attacker sends the fragment 1 with high TTL, false fragment 2 with low TTL. Now IDS receives both the fragments. Victim receives first fragment only since second was a false fragment. Again attacker sends the fragment 3 with high TTL. Now IDS resembles three fragments into meaningless packet and then drops. But victim receives the real fragment 2 and suffers the attack while no longer entry of logs is executed. So these were the techniques used to evade the intrusion detection system. In the next lecture, we will see some techniques which are used to evade the firewall.